In the last video, we talked about normal faults and how you'd form normal faults. So now we're gonna think about thrust faults. So normal faults, we were pulling things apart. Normal faults will be applying horizontal, uh, maximum horizontal compressive stress onto this block. So we'll since like be taking this and pushing it in from the side. So if you push it in from the side, you might start to fold this block or bend this block, but you could also, if it were a hard block, you could break it. So you can imagine taking your hands, pushing them together, and eventually either your fingers are gonna give and you're gonna fold your fingers, or you're gonna push and they're gonna slide against each other. And so faulting, thrust faulting, is where you push them like this and your fingers would slide together. So you've gotta create a plane that cuts this block, where in that plane, this left side of the block is gonna slide up. It's like the finger is breaking. It's gonna slide up and come on top of the right side of this block. So if we were looking at this after it had happened, it might look something like this. Um, So maybe this would be right after it had happened. This side has now shot up and you have this little overhang. Now on earth we have erosion. So that overhang doesn't really typically last or even last at all or really even get formed. It just kind of collapses. Uh, and so what you see on earth when you see a thrust fault um, can be something like this. And you know we, we may or may not, if we have a good road cut, we might see the fault. Um, but otherwise we just kind of see this maybe rounded surface expression or we get a surface expression of something called an alluvial fan um, where this material has kind of washed out to the right. So this is what we probably would see in the case of a thrust fault because this top part is gravitationally unstable, it just collapses. Um, so let's talk about what that would look like with Play-Doh. So we're gonna go over to our Play-Doh again. And once again, I've got my fault plane. Um, it's just a piece of plexiglass. And now I'm gonna insert it and I'm gonna make a thrust fault. Thrust faults tend to be pretty shallow or at least more shallow than normal faults. So I'm gonna try and push that down. So this is my thrust fault. It has cut my Play-Doh layers, and now I need to have some slip or displacement to offset these layers. What defines this thrust fault is that the hanging wall, so the hanging walls on the left, is gonna move up relative to the foot wall. So I'm gonna take this hanging wall, I'm gonna move it up relative to the foot wall. And so if you were driving by and you saw this in a road cut, what you'd notice is that this red layer is offset. You might also notice that the white and blue layers are offset. The red layer on the left, so the hanging wall red layer, has moved up relative to the foot wall red layer. And that's defining it being a thrust fault, is that the hanging wall has moved up relative to the foot wall. Now, if this moved up even more, we would, we would accumulate even more and more displacement. Now, in map view, what you might notice are repeating layers. So blue on top of blue with this fault in between. And one thing that I look forward to um, is a shortening of a layer. When I'm looking at a geologic map, if I see a blue layer like this, and it's cut a little bit smaller, then that makes me think maybe there's a thrust fault going on and this side is on top of that. So let's talk about what you'd see in the field. I'm gonna remove the fault plane just for a second. So after some erosion, this front part might come down. That's what we might see in the field. So little person walking along the edge they're gonna see these fans coming down and that, that side forming. Now, remember, the fault isn't necessarily this line, 
but it's underneath that line because this layer has come out to the side. So underneath that eroded front, there's a fault and it's causing that to come forward. All right, I hope that helped you understand thrust faults.